going back to that doctrine thing with the untempered mortar. As I was telling you, they keep saying, and they keep mixing the profane with the holy. God said they keep making it look like there's no difference between the profane and the holy. I tell everybody the show that was on CNC3 and all of that. But when you, I, want, I want to think about this. Think about this. If poison ain't good for you, right? If poison ain't good for you, just add a little drop in your tea every morning <laughs> and see what happens. Just, 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 not even a big drop, just a small drop every morning and see what happens. You understand what I'm telling you about doctrine and looking back? This morning, eventually it's going to kill you. You could say what? Be careful with what, if they ain't getting your scripture to support it, forget it. Forget it. Because these various among the faith based leaders say, not on the TV, oh, yeah. and directed in all different kind of ways what is good for you and what is not. But they ain't getting you no scripture to support that, right? They can't get the scripture to support it. That come like they're dropping the poison in your tea and your coffee every morning, just a little dot. Because you're consuming it. It's good. You're exactly, you're tasting good, you're consuming it. But that little bit over a period of time is going to affect you. It's going to destroy your spiritual life. It's going to damage you and it's your body. You have your own choices. It is going to destroy you. Yeah. The profane and the holy don't mix. Amen. They are separate things. Amen? Amen. Child of God, children of God. Amen. We there this morning. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Let's move to Ezekiel 22. Ezekiel 22. Reading from verses 17 to 22. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. It's to me become dross. All day are brass and tin and iron and lead in the midst of the furnace. They are even the dross of silver. Therefore thus said the Lord God, because ye are all become dross, behold, therefore I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem. As they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it to melt it, so will I gather you in my anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. Yea, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath, and you shall be melted in the midst thereof. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall ye be melted in the midst thereof. And ye shall know that I, the Lord, have poured out my fury upon you. People, we know what's dross. And waste. That's right. Dross is the waste. Dross is the impurity. The unclean part. Now, what did you look at what God said? I want you to look at what God said. God said, I am going to melt you. And the dross will start to show itself. Dross is the impurity. The part that ain't good. But I want you to understand this now. The dross and the pure metal was existing together in the first place. Mm -hmm. And when you start to catch what coming from with this, eh? the dross and the metal was coexisting in the first place. That come like me or us and sin. We were existing the in the same place. Amen. So here what God said. I go in and place you in a heat, in a melting heat, in a fire, in a furnace designed to what? Melt you. So what could happen? The dross 
goes to come out and show itself. The sin goes to show itself. The wrong actions, the impurities in our lives, goes to start to do what? Show itself. The dross. You have to, you have to understand what God telling Ezekiel here, what he's going to do with the people, you know. Remember, it's not really the metal, you know. He aligns the metal with the people. So when you see sometimes, you start to come under some pressure. You start to come under some pressure and your life start to face some difficulties. Some things start to look amiss. It's because you're getting some heat from God. And it's not for a bad reason. Amen. It can't be for a bad reason. It's for a wrong reason. No. When he put you under the heat, and he start to melt you, right? And you start to see things that are going a little different in your life. You know what he doing with you? He purifying you. He start to remove the dross from you. Sometimes it's relationships, you know. Sometimes it's relationships, you know. And you're in a relationship, and you start to see something start to go and miss when you start to pray. It's because you just start to separate itself now because it can't take the heat. It can't take the heat. So God had to clean us out somehow, you know, so he had to put you under some kind of pressure. Some kind of pressure. You also had to, you also had to catch where I'm coming from. You had to catch, you know why? Here the metals we call it, eh? Silver and gold. What what is called these metals? Precious. You see how you are viewed in God's eyes? Precious. You all are precious metals to him. So he had to put you on a heat, a furnace, that you could melt down so that he draws the impurities could start to come out of you like that he could draw it out. That he could draw it out. So, child of God, if you're going under a little pressure, if you're going under a little pressure, it ain't going to be your demise. Amen. It's not your end. Thank you. Right? No, it's not your end. It can't be your end. Remember, you are a precious metal. Amen. So, you can take that heat. Yes. Right? You can take that heat because when he's done, he's going and remold you into something new. It's something new you're going to turn into, but without the impurities. He's taking away the dross. All what was in your life, what was unclean, impure, nasty, sinful. I am going to heat you to that level that you're going to melt. And the dross is going to start to come to the surface that I could clean it up. I could clean it out. I could remove it from your life. You hear how God does work? Yes. Child of God? Yes. So don't feel no way under a little pressure. Pressure means it precious. Don't feel no way under a little pressure. Because you could withstand that kind of pressure. As a child of God, you are a precious metal. A precious metal, you could withstand the pressure. And he had to discipline, he had to deal with you. Because I had to make you clean. I gotta make you right. I gotta make you right. And there's only one way, as you were saying, Apostle, is by fire. I gotta clean you out. I've got, yeah, I've got to raise that temperature. Remember, it's got to be. Now let me tell you something. Don't look at it easy. Remember, for this metal to melt, we have to reach that degree of heat. So sometimes the road ain't going to be easy, 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 easy. You know? Because we have to get a degree of heat to turn into that, that molding form, that area where you could take us now and fashion us into whatever piece of jewelry you think that you may be designed to be. Amen. Because you can't work with us as we are. 
So we gotta be placed under that heavy degree of heat. A degree of heat that is going to change your form. That is going to change how you originally looked. You hear? Because it had to change how we originally looked. Otherwise, the job ain't done right. Otherwise, the job ain't doing right at all. If you enter into Christ one way, you can't look the same way when you're coming home. You can't act the same way when you're coming home. When you say, I give my life to you, Lord, you can't be the same way after that. It's because I'm going to put you in the fire and I'm going to reshape and remold you. This is what you're telling me, Ezekiel, I had to do with my people. You know? I had to take the impurities and the dross out. I got to take it out. And you know, even us, even us right now as is, and I'm talking children of God, who don't come true already. Who don't come true already. Now, now remind me more older they are to know. Because we're still in that liquid form. But we're still the precious metal. We're working progress. A work in progress. Amen. And we have some dross. Yes. <laughs> we have some dross. We have some impurity to come out. We have some wrongdoings to come out. We have some areas in our lives that need fixing. Because we ain't perfect people. We're not perfect people. So sometimes you will stay in that liquid form for a while because you're just a little hard to come out. Yes. Like you holding on to your dress. You're holding on to your impurities. You're holding on to the things that are causing you from what? Moving forward and being molded into what piece of jewelry that God wants you to be. Let go of the dress. Amen. Let it out. The just rain and said all the time, you know, because it can't stay in the, in the hot liquid. Now. So it's rain and said all the time. But you keep pulling it back down. Let it go. Let the impurities fly out as children of God so that God can mold you into the piece of jewelry because you're a precious metal so that he can use you Amen. where he wants to use you. Amen. You feeling me? Yeah. You all understand what God telling Ezekiel? Yes. Because we got to be clean, you know. Nothing that is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Believe that. Believe that. But you know the next thing God showed me with Ezekiel for still the siege. You know Ezekiel was a type of Christ in that? Ezekiel was a type of Christ in that chapter. You see, every book of the Bible, Christocentric, you just had to look for it and find it. That means Christ is always in it. Always in it. And when I looked at it, when I looked back at it, God told Ezekiel, in verses 4, 5, and 6, he said, I, you're going to bear the iniquity. Yes. Yeah, you're going to bear the iniquity of Israel. You're going to bear the iniquity of, Ju of, of Judah. You're going to bear it. And Christ had to bear our iniquities. But here we confirm it. God tell Ezekiel, remember the recipe for the bread. God tell him, he said, bake that bread on human waste. Human tell him, take human waste and... and Let's read. Go to Ezekiel 4. Go to Ezekiel 4. From verse 12. Go to Ezekiel 4 from verse 12. I'm going to confirm the same for you today. That this Ezekiel chapter 4, the depth of it, 
We inside a scratch yourself in there. We still have a game more. You there? Yeah. And thou shalt eat it as barley cakes. And thou shalt bake it with the dung that cometh out of a man in their sight. You see that? You see that? And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whither I will drive them. Then said I, Our Lord God, behold, you hear what Ezekiel says? My soul hath not been polluted, for from my youth up even till now have I not eaten of that which died of itself or is torn in pieces, neither came the abominable flesh into my mouth. You all understand what happened there? That's right. But you know who Christ was? Christ was blameless. That's how he could have, he could have bore our iniquities. And so Ezekiel represents himself here. We see it? We see it? So it was Jerusalem here represents us and the world today, you know. Us and the world today, you know, and it brings us back that we need a redeemer, just like how they had to lay the iniquities and the sins of the whole of the entire of God's people here, Israel and Judah upon Ezekiel. So it had to be done for us upon the shoulders of Christ Jesus. We had to be redeemed. We needed a savior, and we still need that savior. And it was effected when he died, and when he buried, and when he rose again. Amen? Amen. That's where our life comes from, our everlasting life. Jesus Christ. He bore our iniquities. You want the scripture corresponding for that? 1 Peter 2.24. 1 Peter 2.24. Who his own self bear our sins. We there? We see it? Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes we are? Healed. By whose stripes we are? Healed. 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 So we see the connection and we get the essence of Christ in the books. Amen? Amen? All right. Closing here. Only the precious. Only the precious. It is only the precious metals as I told you. So who are we? The precious. The precious of who? God. Who are we? The precious, only the precious, you know, I put through that process, that refining process. A man who hasn't known Christ has not been put through that process. And he will not be put through that process. Right? He will not be put through that process. He will discipline us because we are sons of God. We are children of God. You will not be disciplined if you are not a son of God. You cannot be chased and you don't belong to me. Amen? Amen. And it's only the precious that could do what? Withstand the heat too. That's why we're keeping your mind here this weekend. Only the precious could withstand the degree of heat that God put in for. And that's just not to tell you look out for something going wrong. And don't think that's what I'm telling you. That's just to let you know how strong you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. We accept. We receive it. Amen. It's just to tell you how strong you really are in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Precious in his sight. Remember Jesus loves the little children? Amen. All the children of the world? Yeah. 
red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Amen. Amen. My beloved, if you're going through something, if you're going through anything, right? And it's taking a while too. If you're going through anything and you feel you're under pressure and you, you're in church and you're praying, know that you are precious to God. Right? And he's paying attention to you. And he's just trying to remove something that ain't supposed to be in there from there. Amen. Don't feel, don't give up and try to come out the furnace. Because you will be molded into what he wants you to be. Amen. Don't try to cut the heat off. Because the impurity will stay with you. Beloved, if you're feeling the heat, stay in it. Amen. God is going to bring you to the, the, the area that he needs you to be in. Stay with God. Amen. <laughs> stay with God. Don't fall out tight because you're Galilee or you feel something going uncomfortable with you. Stay with God. Amen. He is refining us. Hallelujah. He is removing the dross from us. He is removing the impurities. We could be wired, you know. Sometimes we just need that little cleaning. Amen. So we're going to get that degree of burn, that degree of heat to take out what had to come out. Because he loves us. Because he loves us. Amen. 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 And that could only happen. That could only happen. Because we are precious in 